Hello, my name is Lola, and I'm going to react to Light Years Pitch Meeting by Pitch Meeting. Honestly, I didn't see this movie either. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I've heard some people say, you know, like every other movie, like, oh, some people say, oh, that's good, it's worth watching. Some people say, oh, it's bad, it sucks. And then you got the, you know, some people that are in between that are like, oh, I liked it, but I didn't like it because of this, this, and that. And, of course, this movie was infamous for that whole uh, kiss scene for some reason. Like, man, it's just two people kissing. It's like, man, just shut up. Get over it. Like, man, there's my, it's not even real people. Like, man, it's freaking animated. Like, come on, man. <sighs> people are so stupid sometimes. I swear to God. Anyway, if you want to like, comment, subscribe to my channel, you can. Or if you don't want to, that's fine, too. I just do this for fun. Here we go. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we'd do a Buzz Lightyear spin-off movie. Oh, boy. What? Okay, so check it out, <laughs> sir. We're gonna start the movie with some text saying that in 1995, a kid named Andy saw a movie and that made him want a Buzz Lightyear toy, and this is that movie. So this movie is a movie in another movie's universe? That's right. So the Toy Story universe has a screenwriter guy and a producer guy of their own, and they made money off this movie, and now so will I. I guess so. Oh my god, my man, you're making money for versions of us that don't even exist. <laughs> That's right, sir. <laughs> I love you. Thank you, thank you sir. I am in love with you. All right. Hey, can we have hey. Buzz Lightyear watch a movie in this movie and then make that movie someday? We can do whatever we want, sir, as long as it's derivative of intellectual property with a proven track record of financial success. Of course. Of course. So tell me about this thing. I guess since it's a 90s action movie that Andy saw, there's gonna be a bunch of over-the-top action and cheese, huh? Aha! Uh -huh. No, none at all. Oh. Yeah, actually hmm. kind of grounded and serious. But Buzz was like an over-the-top parody of action hero and sci-fi archetypes. Yeah, exactly. So none of that. And now that I think of it, most of the fun came from that conflicting with the realization that he's a toy. Right. So now he's a fairly serious human character. So you took mm. out the fun parts. Yeah, get those out of here. Okay, well mm. at least we'll have Tim Allen's iconic voice. No, get that out of here too. So this is pretty much a different character, but wrapped in Buzz Lightyear branding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, well I can't wait for him to go on a bunch of space adventures on a bunch of different planets. Oh, I bet, sir. This is gonna take place on one planet, though. But what about to mm. infinity and beyond? Oh yeah, they're gonna say that a lot, but then the whole plot of the movie's about them being stuck on this one boring planet. Okay, okay, okay. So, all right, so how how does this play out? Right, so Buzz and his best friend Alicia are leading this, like, <laughs> space exploration thing, right? And they got a bunch of people in cryosleep on their vessel. Okay. And so they land this big old vessel with everybody on board on this planet to see if it's livable or not. They just go ahead and land the entire vessel with everybody on it. Why wouldn't they send, like, a scout ship or something? So the movie can happen, but then it turns out this planet is hostile, and then Buzz accidentally crashes the ship so they're stuck there. Oh no. So then a whole year passes and they've set up this colony there and they're trying to recreate this hyperspace fuel that they need to get off the planet. Okay. And so Buzz volunteers to test the hyperspace fuel but while he's up in space it turns out it's like an interstellar situation. Oh, getting stuck in a bookcase with Matthew McConaughey is tight. Yeah, no, that's not what I meant. See, there's actually time dilation so he's up in space for four minutes but four years have passed on the planet. Oh, geez. So obviously Buzz is a little freaked out and he's given in this therapy robot cat called Socks, who's just the cutest little merchandising opportunity. Oh man, we're gonna sell a bunch of toys thanks to this movie about a fictional movie that made a fictional kid want to buy some fictional toys that we then sold a bunch of in the real world. Did I get that? Was that? Did I get that right? Oh, my yeah, head I think hurts so, now. sir. The point is, Socks the Cat toys will be sold in the real world for real money. Okay, money. So then Buzz keeps on testing this fuel because all he cares about is the mission and fixing his mistake. But four years pass every time he tests it. Exactly. And so meanwhile, his friend Alicia is growing old and starting a family in a way that'll fuel Twitter arguments for several days. What? And eventually, Buzz comes back from a trip and Alicia has died. Oh, yeah, that happens to people after an extended period of time. So Buzz is very sad, but also he learns that Socks the Cat has developed some hyperspace fuel that probably works. Oh, well, fantastic. Yeah, except there's a new guy in charge of the colony now. Oh. And he's decided that these missions are over, and they're all just gonna kind of live on this planet now. I guess that makes sense if they're all mm. settled and they have families there and stuff. Yeah, so they try to take Socks the Cat away from Buzz. Feels like he'd need that thing more than ever. Yeah, well, they don't want him to have it anymore. So why didn't they take it during the many years he was gone? Unclear. So then Buzz escapes with Socks, <laughs> and they head towards the spaceships to try out the new 
fuel. Well, it's gonna be hard for them to just take a ship with everybody after them. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, it turns out nobody really goes to guard the spaceships, even though that's obviously where he's heading. Oh, well, great. And then they <laughs> successfully fly at hyperspeed. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. Yeah, except now they get back and 22 years have passed and the planet's been Ooh. invaded by these robots and a bad guy named Zerg. He's from the original movies. He sure is, sir. <laughs> Amazing. So what's Buzz gonna do? Well, he's gonna meet Alicia's granddaughter and these two other new recruits that aren't very good and he's gonna have to learn to work with them. Okay. So then the next little chunk of the movie is gonna be them making mistakes and then fixing those mistakes. Good way to fill up some runtime, sure. So what does Zerg want exactly? Oh, well, we're gonna have this big twist where it turns out that Zerg is is actually an older Buzz from the future. You know, we established in Toy Story 2 that Zerg huh? is Buzz's father. Hey, shut up, and so it turns out that this Buzz traveled far into the future and then came back but ran out of fuel right now, so he needs more fuel from this Buzz to keep going back and stop the original mistake that led to this whole thing. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, because see, he's obsessed with completing the mission, but now if he does, he's gonna wipe out all the new families that sprang from that mistake. Oh, yeah, no, that's not good. And our Buzz was obsessed with completing the mission, too, but now he he sees that maybe the real mission was the friends he made along the way. Oh my god, you okay? Yeah, sorry, I don't know what that was. Alright, so why did this older Buzz go by the name Zerg? Well, he tried to program all the robots to say Buzz, but the closest they got was Zerg, so he went with that. Ooh, big stretch, buddy. Oh, is there a dog in here? No. Oh, okay, so then our Buzz decides to destroy the fuel and sacrifice his mission to save the colony. Uh. Nice, so what do you think? Well, you know, I kind of think if Andy had seen this movie in 1995, he would have wanted a Socks the Cat toy instead of a Buzz Lightyear toy. Yeah, that's a good point. He is the the best character in this thing, but other than that, what do you think? I mean, we're cashing in on a popular 1990s movie. I feel like that's a sure way to dominate the box office. Amazing. Unless, you know, another franchise happens to be doing that exact same thing at the exact same time. What? Mm. Hi everybody, Ryan here. Thanks for watching that pitch meeting. Hope you liked it. If you haven't already subscribed, this is a brand new pitch meeting only channel. It's only got pitch meetings on it. Also, you can let me know in the comment section what movies and shows you want to see pitches for. And check back soon for a new one, because when you check back soon for a new one, I'm gonna have made a new one. Bye. <laughs> God, that ending, like, what? Future buzz? What? It, 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 what? Well, that just makes my head hurt. Ugh. Ugh. Jesus. Uh, it seems like it's another movie I'm glad I didn't see. Jesus. <sighs> anyway, that's my reaction to Lightyear Pitch Meeting by Pitch Meeting. I'll see ya in the next one. Bye!